So the Vegas Golden Knights have won the Stanley Cup and we're all just so happy for their long-suffering fan base. Six whole seasons in the NHL and finally they get their cup. I mean, what a great story that is. Today I've put every current NHL franchise that has won a Stanley Cup on a map to see which one rises above the rest. There's 21 champions in total and each will be represented by at least three members of their most recent cup winning roster. In addition, those three plus cup champs will be joined by the best players in each franchise's history. So for example, Patrice Bergeron and Brad Marchand from the 2011 Bruins will be joined by Bobby Orr and Phil Esposito among other legends. Now obviously because they have such a short history, the Vegas Golden Knights kind of get shafted in this video, but guess how much sympathy I have for for them. Yeah, not even a little bit. Step one is to spin this wheel of Stanley Cup champs to see which team, which franchise will be attacking first and we're heading out west. Step two, let's figure out which direction those LA Kings will be launching their attack. They're going north, slightly east. And as you can see, I've given LA the top half of California. I had to split it up somehow. And northeast from them is into Canada, the Calgary Flames. Okay. The LA Kings have won two cups in their franchise history. Most recently, 2014, led by Andre Kopitar, Drew Doughty, John Quick. While Calgary has just one cup to their name. It was in 1989, led by Doug Gilmore, Joe Neuendijk, Al McInnes. That's a, a whole lot of studs. Oh my word. This was a low scoring tight battle between two Western Conference foes. Michael Hanzus gave the Kings a lead before the end of the second period, but Theo Fleury cut that in half, giving the Flames a legit shot in the third. Calgary's had plenty of chances on the power play here in the third period. The Kings literally just holding on six and a half left. They can do it. They can hold on down the stretch. Four minutes left. Does Calgary have a tying goal? Joe Neuendijk does Gilmore. They have Jerome McGinley on their team. They are loaded. Oh, my, but they can't beat the Kings late. And they didn't score very much, but it don't matter because LA scores our first move of the video up to Calgary. And in addition to taking over land, the winning team also gets to take a player from their vanquished foe. In this case, LA steals Jerome McGinley. And now that we know what we're doing, we're about to cruise through these Stanley Cup champs. Up next, we're going back east, New Jersey. And which way will Joy Z be attacking? One of their New York foes, possibly northeast again? Wow, I was definitely about to say that's not even possible, but technically, technically Northeast Joyzy versus Boston. Are you serious already this matchup? Jersey has won three cups in their history, most recently 03, led by the defensive tandem Scott Niedemeyer and Scott Stevens, as well Marty Brodeur. While Boston, yep, mentioned them in the intro, six-time cup champs, most recently 2011, led by Patrice Bergeron, Brad Marchand, and yes, they completely broke my heart in case that Jersey wasn't a giveaway. There were goals aplenty in this Eastern Conference battle. It was 2-2 after 20 minutes, but in the second, the Bruins broke things open with a pair of Marshan goals to go up 5-3. Come on, Jersey. Come on. It's not too late. There you go. Scott Niedemeyer brings them back to within one. That is veteran leadership from the back end. I don't know how Marty Berdura surrendered five goals. Power play. You can do it. Come on. Uh, nobody wants to see... Bo nobody wants to see Boston advance. They're just going to get better too. No. Oh, come on. Boston begins their potential attack from the Northeast, and with no Tim Thomas in the game, of course, Boston would steal 94 overall Marty Berdur. We'd remain in the metropolitan area as the wheel gave us Philadelphia, sent them northeast into New York Islanders territory. The Islanders won all four of their Stanley Cups in a four-year span, ending in 1983, led by Mike Bossy, Brian Trottier. In one of those years, 1980, they beat the Flyers, who were two-time champs, most recently 1975, led by Bobby Clark. This is a true old-school, old-time hockey rematch. I love it. And of course, this old-time hockey matchup would be an old-time grind it. Okay, 2-2 deep into the third. Nobody scored in the final frame. I am waiting. Will we get... Oh, we won't get our first OT game. Travis Sanheim, one of the current day players. Pat LaFontaine ties it up. One of the... Well, not 1980s OGs, but an old-time Islander. Okay. Oh, there it is. One of the Sutters. Is that... Ryan Ellis ties it up. Yo, this game is chaos. These two teams want it badly. 4-4. Four, four. We've got four goals in the third period. And Sean Couturier makes it 5-4. Another current era fly and they're gonna hold on. And Philadelphia indeed gets their revenge for the 1980 Stanley Cup Finals. Congrats. I went ahead and sent Dennis Potvin, who was also on those Islander Dynasty teams. Uh, he's joining Philly. Next up, the wheel would send us to the great state of Texas, meaning the Dallas Stars were in action heading west, slightly northwest, which I took to mean into Vegas territory. Dallas with their lone Stanley Cup victory coming back in 1999, led by Mike Madano, Brett Hull, Sergei Zuboff. Ooh. And as we know, Vegas is one time. Stanley Cup 
Stanley Cup champs uh, about a week ago from when I'm posting this video and yeah they're led by everybody from that team I mean I can't lie to you all this is pretty much a mismatch on paper Dallas with all them legends but maybe Vegas surprises us all and then again uh, maybe they won't surprise us all Dallas I'm kind of proud of them all right I wasn't rooting for them but they took care of business where they should have 5-1 that's a big win Dallas begins making their push out west and we'll go ahead and give them the man who probably should have won con smite we'd fulfill our destiny in this video a little earlier than expected as the wheel sent us to Canada Montreal and of course right into Toronto Maple Leafs territory the Montreal Canadiens 23 times Stanley Cup champions including most recently 1993 it's been a minute they were led by Denny Savard Patrick Wall whereas speaking of a while Toronto has won 13 cups in their history 1967 was the last time led by Tim Horton yeah that guy he was playing hockey this historic matchup was inevitable basically unavoidable but yeah to see it getting out of the way this early a powerhouse is about to fall oh my gosh and that powerhouse is the Toronto mate you know what maybe I shouldn't even be calling them that 6-1 they just got destroyed by Montreal the kings of Canada apparently Guy Lafleur and Maurice Rocket Richard both had three point nights for the Canadians that'll do and I'm definitely not rooting for one team to dominate this video but if there was such a team yeah it'd probably be the team with the most Stanley Cups ever and the rich get richer as Austin Matthews is taking his talents to the Montreal Canadiens. We had another rivalry on tap as the wheel gave us Chicago, sending them southwest directly into St. Louis Blues territory. Chicago has won six Stanley Cups in their history, most recently 2015, led by Jonathan Taves, Patrick Kane, the dynamic duo, while St. Louis got their first just a couple years ago, 2019, led by Ryan O'Reilly, Alex Petrangelo on the back end. Blackhawks Blues was a true grinded out playoff style matchup with Vladimir Tarasenko scoring the lone goal through 40 minutes but of course the Blackhawks had an answer it was Jeremy Roenick early in this third period we're looking we're looking at OT here I can feel it in my bones I mean a 1-1 game goal so hard to come by I doubt we get some sort of clutch master class unless I'm reverse jinxing it St. Louis on the power play and they come up empty yeah we're heading towards OT all sorts of star power on the ice the Blues though have a power play to get things going can they capitalize early the answer to that question was a resounding no St. Louis had like one shot on that power play uh now it's the Blackhawks turn can they respond five on five good four check from the Blackhawks that's Bobby Hull this could be something Jonathan Taves out front Curtis Joseph is there we're into the second OT period now Tony Monty. I think he just hit the post crossbar uh they cannot buy a goal here Chris Chelios the Blackhawks are all over him Tony Monte. I think he just hit the post again you've got to be kidding me. both goalies had been putting on an absolute clinic so I was shocked when one of them finally surrendered a rebound oh there it is Brendan Shanahan Johnny on the spot for the rebound in double OT the Blues win it wow that took a good minute in OT but down go the Blackhawks congrats St. Louis and even though Curtis Joseph was pretty amazing for the Blues I'm giving them Glenn Hall because he's 93 overall and was also amazing back to the metropolitan area as the wheel landed on Washington sending them southeast the only team the only region that makes sense is into Carolina territory Washington won their only cup back in 2018 led by of course Alexander Ovechkin. Carolina, meanwhile, one-time champs as well. 2006 post-lockout led by Eric Stahl and Rod Brindamore. Unfortunately, in terms of all-time teams, this was a bit of a mismatch. A shout-out for Billy Ranford, two points for Ovi. That's an easy Caps dub. And I'll go ahead and put the Capitals logo there over North Carolina, just so we can see it a bit better. We'll also go ahead and take over and own Ron Francis. That's a good center for Ovi. The wheel would send us back to where this whole thing got started. California, this time the Ducks sending them east directly into Dallas Stars territory. The Ducks just one-time cup champs back in 2007. Timu Solani, Scott Niedemeyer, Chris Pronger, they were loaded. So I was a bit surprised to see all of this. Look at this chaotic third period. I've lost track of how many goals have been scored, but not enough for the Ducks, unfortunately. The Stars are just a buzzsaw, man. Haskin and Zubov on the back end combined for seven points. That's tough. Uh-oh, Dallas with their second win of the video. They might be an early powerhouse contender. And why not make that deadly dynamic stars back end even better Chris Pronger there you go just 13 teams remained when we landed on Colorado for the first time sending them northeast all the way up to Canada that's Montreal's new territory what a matchup the abs have won three cups in their history most recently 2022 led by Nate McKinnon Cal McCarr we know on paper Colorado has probably a top two or three all-time team they are so loaded but will it be enough to keep up with the legendary Habs only one star mattered early on in this game and that was Montreal 
Montreal's version of Patrick Waugh, who was blanking the abs as he watched his Canadians get out to an eventual 2-0 lead. Oh no, all that firepower called right. There it is, Gabe Landeskog cuts the lead down to 2-1. Do they have a goal? Patrick Waugh versus Patrick Waugh. You know with him in net, it's going to be legendary on both sides. Montreal, Matt Sundin, the former Leaf comes through for the abs, ties the game. A furious comeback in the third period, late by those Colorado Avalanche, paid off in OT as Miko Rantanen potted a greasy rebound goal to win it for the Avs. The Canadians really blew a 2-0 and half of Canada lead in that one. That's crazy. There's really nothing this Avs roster needs, but we'll give them Larry Robinson, another stud first pairing defenseman, and there'd be no rest for our new leader in the clubhouse as the Avs were back up, heading southwest from their original territory was into Dallas territory. Let's go. And once again, we're about to lose a powerhouse early in this video. Well, we're midway through this video, but both these teams are proven. Both have amazing rosters and both have one goal into the third period. No more than that. I will say the abs, I think still have the better team on paper, but Dallas is obviously great. I've explained that. Oh, and Gabe Landeskog puts the, puts the abs up. Ed Belfort. Okay. You got to be sturdy, brother. Do the stars have an equalizer late? Y'all got to be clutch. Five on four power play. Here it is. Here it is. Dallas. Brett Hole. Mike Medano. Jack Eichel. No, you got nothing. It, oh, Sam Gerrard. For some reason, I thought that was Dallas coming through with the tying goal. Dallas only generated 21 shots on net. That's not good enough. Oh boy. It might just be the abs world that we are all living in right now is they've got spots all over North America now. And they've also got, it takes a second to scroll down to Brett Hull added to their team. For the second time this video, the wheel would land on Washington, sending them southeast the compass wood into Tampa Bay Lightning territory to Florida. Tampa has won three straight cups most recently 2021 led by Steven Stamkos and Victor Hedman. Alex Ovechkin would open the scoring for Washington in this game but Tampa would get through two periods with a 2-1 lead but Kevin Hatcher has tied it up for the Capitals. Braden Point puts them back ahead 3-2. Okay crazy. That was a crazy two minute sequence in the third. We are under eight minutes remaining. Washington had it tied for a second but Dave Andrichuk that's his second goal of this game. The veteran is clutch. Under five minutes left does Washington. Nah. Nah I don't think they got the heroics. I think Tampa enters this video and immediately takes a W, upsetting the Caps. Brad Richards. Okay, John Carter, the goal's coming hot and heavy now. Ovi lives on in this video as he joins the Lightning. And with that, just 10 teams remain, 10 Stanley Cup champs on our wheel. And we are going to see Pittsburgh for the first time. I'm okay with that. We need to figure out that metropolitan area. There's a lot of champs from that region and Pittsburgh is heading north. Nice. We got a couple first timers. I like it. Pittsburgh right into New York. Wait, the Rangers, they have played once. Actually, no, they haven't. I lied. Just getting the Islanders and Rangers confused. Anyways, the Pittsburgh Penguins have won five Stanley Cups in their franchise history. Most recently, 2017, led by Sid the Kid and Yevgeny Malkin. While the Rangers have won four Cups in their history. Most recently, 1994, led by Mark Messier, Brian Leach. And okay, I'm not I'm not sure what uh, King Henrik Lundqvist was on today, but uh, wasn't on being an elite goal. 7-2? Are you kidding me, New York? Mario had four points, actually, as the Pens chased the Lundqvist from that game. And now all of New York has fallen. We're going to trust that Lundqvist can bounce back because the Pens really needed a goalie. Our wheel gave us Detroit for the first time. The compass would send them southeast, meaning they were into the tip of Colorado Canadian territory. Sure. Detroit has won 11 cups in their original six history. Most recently, 2008, led by Pavel Datsuk, Henrik Zetterberg, Nick Lidstrom. This is awesome because Detroit, Colorado has long been a heated, intense rivalry, of course, culminating with that epic brawl back in 1997. Let's see what these two teams have for us here today. Well, through two periods, we did in fact have a tight, low scoring battle with the Avs holding a 2-1 lead into the final frame. Colorado, obviously the heavyweight of this video. They've won two or three games and they go up. Oh my gosh, Brett Holt. I think he's on the Red Wings too. I was so confused. Yes, Colorado stole him from Dallas. You know, Detroit, you have so much history. Gordy Howe, Ted Lindsay. I mean, the legends are all there from all their Stanley Cups. Nick Lindstrom, do so. Oh no. Dude, is Patrick Waugh really the MVP of this video? Is he really going to backstop Colorado? Oh, he's so good. Gordy Howe was kind of a no-show for the Red Wings in that game. Hopefully, he can make an impact for the Avalanche. With eight teams remaining, the wheel would bring us back to where we started. Los Angeles, the compass sent them north, which I took to mean into Oilers territory from LA's new Calgary territory. It's the Wayne Gretzky Bowl. Edmonton, five-time Stanley Cup champs, most recently 1990, led by Mark Messier, Yari Curry on that team. But again, both these teams are led by Wayne.
Wayne Gretzky, 97 overall on both sides. Who gets the upper hand? Um, I can't lie. This, this is shocking. This is shocking if it holds. Edmonton, one goal. They have Connor McDavid. They have Leon Dreisaitl. They have Wayne Gretzky. Mark Messi. Dude, who is in net for the Kings? And how did he just dominate the oil? 3-1. Real? Okay. Wow. Okay. Rogie Vachon. Canada hasn't seen a Stanley Cup champ since 1993. And they've officially fallen now in this video too. This duo didn't work in Edmonton, but Connor joins Wayne Gretzky now in LA. And with seven Stanley Cup champs left on the wheel, we'd seen them all, including St. Louis. The compass would send them northeast, meaning they were next up to challenge Colorado. Throughout this dominant run, the Avs have relied on Patrick Waugh on their goaltending and would need to again in this one as Peter Forsberg had the lone goal through 40 minutes. But things would change quickly in the third as finally Patrick Waugh faltered just a touch and the Blues got out to a lead. Oh my gosh, they might be doing it. The St. Louis Blues, remember they had that long OT game against Chicago earlier. They are made of different stuff. The Avs have one goal. The Avs, they cannot score. They've relied on Patrick Waugh this whole video. He's let in two goals in the third period. The Blues are the, the Blues. The Blues play Gloria. They've done it. And with that, man, all, all bets are off in this video. Are you kidding me? St. Louis takes over like all of North America. It was a super tough call, but St. Louis has Glenn Hall in net, a great defense. I figured they needed a forward and Joe Sackick has scored a bunch of goals this video. After ousting Colorado, St. Louis immediately got put back up on the wheel, trying to reassert their dominance, this time going into Tampa Bay Lightning territory. Tampa has played just the one game, meaning they have just one upgrade. St. Louis is looking stacked. I don't know, boys. Oh my goodness. Um, St. Louis is up 4-0 after one period. I, I, I didn't see that coming. No, no. I, like, I'm sorry. Can you all imagine how drunk Brett Hull must be right now on a podium in St. Louis? I mean, he's actually playing on the team now, too, and they're up 9-3. Oh, my gosh. And we'll continue to pass Alex Ovechkin along. I hope he's not bringing, like, a losing curse to St. Louis. I guess we'll find out. And we'd find that out immediately as the wheel gave us Pittsburgh sent him north, which, of course, is into St. Louis territory. Can the Pens do it? And by it, I meant could Pittsburgh once again flip this entire video on its head, take over the map, upset world order. Well, through 40 minutes, that dream looked like it could become a reality. Pittsburgh, St. Louis, both teams potted a pair. It was 2-2 heading to the final frame. Oh, Brett, Brett Hull. Brett Hull. Okay, he's not drunk at the podium anymore. He's out here scoring goals for the Blues in the clutch. Alex Steen gets another. Oh my God. Pittsburgh, I thought you were the team to do. Dude, St. Louis. St. Louis is just the team of destiny this video. Pittsburgh, get it all. Pitts OV. Oh my gosh. OV getting the last laugh. He does not have a loser curse. Ovi again. Ovi again. It's Henrik Lundqvist that has the losing curse on him. Why did I put him on Pittsburgh? Four point night for Alex Ovechkin as he joins the St. Louis Blues. Drunk Brett Hull with three points of his own. That was a dominant performance. You know we had to keep Mario alive in this video. Let's go St. Louis. And with that, just four Stanley Cup champs remain on our wheel. This is it, boys. This is where we make our money. Philadelphia. We're going back to Pennsylvania. And I'm pretty sure this compass spin doesn't matter. Matter. I think they're encompassed by St. Louis, speaking of which. Oh, wow. They could have ended up playing Boston. I totally forgot. Uh, it's moot, though, because they were sent west right into all that blue. Just as an update, because I know you're probably all yelling at me. This is what the Blues lineup now looks like. Lemieux, Sackick, Federko down the middle. They've got Ovi. They've got Brett Hull. Just a perfect team. I haven't given them any defensive additions because their defensive core was so good to begin with. Pronger, McInnes. And, of course, Glenn Hall in net. They stole him after that epic Blackhawks OT game. The Flyers have played one game this video. It was the third game of the video. I can't even remember who I added, but uh, yeah, their team pales in comparison to St. Louis. Oh, that's right. I give them Dennis Potvin for their blue line. I mean, it's a pretty good team. 89 Bernie Perrant in net, but obviously this would be an upset and we might just have an upset cooking boys jumping right into the third period. Mario, Lem oh my gosh. Um, Remember when it was one nothing, not 10 seconds ago? I really did think I thought Philly had a chance in this game. I thought they would score the equalizer, maybe go back to OT, but uh, nah, Mario Lemieux. I guess he was a pretty important acquisition for the Blues after failing with the Penguins. Well, there you go, anticlimactic. And the problem isn't just that the Blues have basically all of North America sewn up, it's that they've also acquired just so many upgrades along the way. So whether it's the Kings or the Bruins that end up facing them next, I mean, they're gonna be overmatched by a mile and it's gonna be the Kings. We obviously don't need to compass anything. There's no possible way for the Kings to end up playing Boston. So there you go. You know what? If you were going to
to tell me in this moment there was one team that could potentially derail the St. Louis Blues, I guess I'd put my money on the one with Connor McDavid and Wayne Gretzky, okay? That is pretty low. Their defensive court definitely leaves a ton to be desired. And I'm not sure if we can trust Roji Vachon to post another impressive game. But hey, we have um, actually no other options except Boston. And nobody wants to see that. And as I called for when looking at their lineup, the Stars did show up for LA. Of course, they did for the Blues as well. This was a 3-3 game heading into the third period. Boys, I am terrified. <gasps> Kevin Fiala right away. But we're going to go for it for now. Chris Pronger. No, I knew St. Louis. Their back end is so solid. Oh, do we have OT? We haven't seen OT in a minute. Like a good minute. Does a team have a clutch goal to prevent us from going to the extra fan? And oh, we're going OT. The Blues run in this video started way back when with a never ending OT game against Chicago. This would be a fitting way for them to uh, clinch their spot. Wayne Gretzky. Oh, what? <laughs> was right there. Alex Petrangelo leading the break for the uh, St. Louis Blues. He could get caught up ice. Wait, Joe Sackick. Dude, you don't want Joe Sackick in a better spot than that on the ice. How can he not convert? McDavid and Gretz on the other side for the Kings. Come on, someone score a clutch OT winner. Dude, why is Glenn Hall so good? And indeed, we are off to OT number two. Let's go, boys. A few moments later. And now we're off to OT three. And off rip in OT three, it was one of the legendary stars stepping up. And there it is. Wait. Wayne Gretzky wearing number 95 for some reason. He <laughs> finally puts us out of our... And he beat the Blues. I kind of lost track of what was happening. Marcel Dion had three points. Wayner, the game winner, two points. Connor McDavid scored a goal. Those stars did come through in a clutch way. I was literally sitting there watching so much OT. It was driving me crazy. I completely lost the plot of what was happening. The LA Kings have done it, taking down St. Louis, who was on just an unbelievable course to win this video. There's only two teams remaining. LA, Boston. <laughs> let's freaking do it, man. Roji Vachon has been amazing for the Kings, but let's give him 93 Glenn Hall to try and close this video out. The Bruins entered this video as one of the greatest rosters on paper, but they've had just one upgrade, so they definitely pale in comparison to the LA Kings on the other side. But man, Bobby Orr, that defense, this defense, of course, amazing. And that's right. I gave them Marty Brunner after they beat the Devils earlier. They might still be better on paper. But I can't believe, no, one upgrade and they might be the better team. This is wild. How is this going to play out? Oh my word, it's going to play out. Ray Bork, Ray Bork. Uh, Kevin Fiala ties it. That's his second goal of the game. And Willie Mitchell, are you kidding me? Revenge for the Vancouver Canucks, even though Willie Mitchell wasn't on the 2011 team. Oh my goodness. Okay, okay. I did not think this would happen. We entered the third period tied. The Kings have gone up 3-2. Five and a half left. There was no need to make this any more dramatic. The teams are doing it themselves. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Is this it for Boston? I'm slowing the time down. One minute it left the kings the kick Connor mcdavid they have done it oh my gosh what wayner and connor couldn't do in edmonton because they lost to the kings i love it man it's so ironic or inception like the kings have done it they have beat the boston bruins all it took was one timely victory over the st louis blues and yes the la kings would end up marching to victory the last stanley cup champion standing amazing and if you enjoyed this NHL imperialism video, please consider subscribing and check out the first one I uploaded on my channel with an international flavor. Click it right there.